You know, on AmpReparGuy.com, here's my phone number and my website. Okay, so today we have a Heathkit SB200 amplifier. Filter cap failed, so we're going to go ahead and replace the filter cap rectifier board with a replacement Harbach board that I need to assemble and install. Also replace the old style plate blocking cap with a new High Energy Corporation ceramic cap. I already went ahead and cleaned the rotary switches. I use deoxic gold. Stuff's awesome. The grid resistors have already been changed. Grid loading resistors. So those look good. Everything else looks good. I will change the electrolytics while I'm under here with new ones. I'll clean the TR relay and uh, that'll be it. I'll also clean this rotary switch. I haven't done that yet, but everything else looks good. I also noticed that someone pulled off the center pin for ground, so I'll cut this off and I'll change the end. Really need to have a ground. All right, so that's about it. I'll be back with the finished amplifier. See you then. Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com with the second video for the Heathkit SP200. There's my phone number and my website. So we took out the old board, assembled the new Harbach board, and installed it. I got rid of all the carbon filled up from the failure of the original board. Added some heat shrink over the secondary leads of the plate transformer. They looked okay, but um, these wires are so old, I wanted to give them a little bit of extra insulation between each other and the chassis. Changed the original doorknob cap, the yellow type here, over to a Heinergy Corp cap. These are prone to failing, so I always change them. Went ahead and oiled the fan, con cleaned all the contacts on all three rotary switches with the deoxic gold. Awesome stuff. I always check the SO239 connectors <clears throat> for resistance when you go to plug it in. This had like, it felt like almost nothing with the PL59 plugged in when you slid it, when I'd slide it in and out. You never want an open on the output, the R voltage will rise and you can flash band switch, flash tubes, other stuff can happen. So, you know, um, this gentleman actually, someone had worked on this, someone else here in Connecticut, and they used self-tapping wood screws to hold the connector in. It's kind of funny. Um, so that's gone. It's out of here. This kit actually came with a soft start, so I assembled that. And I like to use uh, double-sided sticky tape to keep it in place. Uh, it's, uh, the, the tape attached to the little relays and then the chassis. And this thing will never go anywhere. Rezip tied everything. Changed that electrolytic. It's preventative maintenance. Once again, clean the this rotary switch, the input rotary switch, output rotary switch, contacts on the TR relay. There's the new Teflon SO239. I used 632 screws with cap nuts this time. Did it the right way. So that's about it. This thing is, uh, this thing's ready to roll. Someone already changed the grid loading resistors. So everything else looks good. Don't see any other issues. So I'm going to fire it up. And, um, oh, I also changed the plug. I put a new plug on the end. And here's the old cap. So this thing should last a long time. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed day. Take care.